today we're going to continue looking at the late uh, stages of the American West, and we're going to look at uh, lawlessness at this time. And the way we're going to study lawlessness is to look at two individuals, Billy the Kid and a guy called Wyatt Earp. You probably heard of Billy the Kid, maybe not Wyatt Earp. Uh, and we're going to use those as a case study in studying how lawlessness changes, because it changes quite drastically as the American West develops. Remember, it starts very lawless after the mining towns and the cow towns are set up and the law enforcement isn't, the structure isn't there. And it uh, changes as it goes on, as the structure is developed. So we're going to look at how things change in the American West towards the back end of the, of the course. So you started, there's going to be some um, uh, recall questions from stuff earlier on in the course from a variety of topics. I'd like you to have a go at as many as you can. Leave blank, just a number, put the number and leave blank the ones you don't know. Uh, I would like you to write out the questions for the ones you don't know. You, you can just write the answer for the ones you do. But if you don't know, write the question up and I'll go through the answer. There is no point in you just waiting for the answers to come up on the screen and writing them down. You might as well not bother doing it because it's not going into your brain at all. At least try. If you don't know them, now is the time to start learning. You have an assessment prior to Easter. So what year was the Exodus the movement? Two reasons why the ranchers and the homesteaders had a rivalry. Difference between the first and second, and there's a typo there, apologies, the Fort Laramie Treaties. What was the name of the trail that triggered Red Cloud's War? How much was a cow worth in the North and East, so in New York or Chicago? What year was the Oklahoma land rush? How much land did the government grant for the railroad? How much land did they give away to the railroad companies? How many people had taken the Oregon Trail by 1869 when the railroads were finished? Give two consequences of the 1851 Indian Appropriations Act and how many people died in the Sand Creek Massacre. So have a go at those. If you don't know the answer to them, write a question out and we'll go through the answers adding green pen. Please do that. Uh, and then, um, so pause the video and then unpause and I'll go through the answers. So your answers are the Exodus to Movement was 1879. Two reasons there was a rivalry between ranchers and homesteaders was that the homesteaders were claiming ownership of the land with access to water. There were uh, ranchers were fencing off their ranches. Uh, there was damaging of crops, stealing of livestock. They'd steal grass to graze uh, the cows on, and there'd be a rivalry with sheep farming and homesteaders as well. What was the difference in the first and second Fort Laramie Treaty? So the first one in 1851 ended the conflict and guaranteed safe access for the migrants who were traveling west. You remember they gave the Indians annuities and said, right, you've got to allow our railroad companies to come in and not attack them. And in return, we'll leave you to your land. Obviously, that was broken many times. The second one was in 1868, and it closed the Bozeman Trail, ending Red Cloud's war and moving Red Cloud's tribe onto a reservation in Dakota. The name of the trail for number four was the Bozeman Trail. A cow was worth forty dollars in the east and the north. The Oklahoma land rush was eighteen ninety three. The government gave away three hundred million acres of land as part of the railroad development. Four hundred thousand people took the Oregon Trail by eighteen sixty nine. The Indian Appropriation Act gave money, pay, uh, mo paid money to Indians to move on to reservations where they could still hunt buffalo. And the hope was that by teaching them farming, the Indians would become what the whites called more civilized, basically more like them, which is a slightly racist idea. But that's the whole manifest destiny idea that their way of life is the correct one. And finally, 130 people were killed in the Sand Creek Massacre. So today we're going to look at outlaws and there are people who are outside of the protection of the law. So the law could treat them how they want because they are they are committing crimes. So what I would like you to do to start with is just write down as many reasons that you can remember as to why there is lawlessness in the West after the start of uh, people starting to move. So people start moving in large numbers after 1849, really picks up pace in the 1860s with the Homestead Act and the Cow Towns. Uh, but why is there lawlessness? List at least three, two or three. I'll go through some answers in a second. So a really good way of categorizing these is to put them into factors. Uh, and it's geographical to do with geography, economic to do with money, political, obviously to do with politics, social, that's to do with how people interact with each other. And finally, like the values and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people who did live in the West. So the geographical factors which caused lawlessness was it was a massive area and there was not much transport until after 69. And even then, the railroads took a while to get all the little... Uh, there was a big transcontinental one, but you had to build all the little ones coming off it to go to the towns. So it made it very difficult for sheriffs and marshals to travel from town to town to deal with lawlessness. There was economic factors. So there wasn't a lot of money to go around. So because of all these different jobs, the cowboys, the homesteads, people living in towns, ranches, miners, herders, and cattle barons, some had money, some didn't. So they would resort to crime, to cattle rustling, rustling to um, claim jumping in order to, um, you know, make money. And that would often lead to crime. 
Political factors, there wasn't much investment from the government to help fund the developments. It was underfunded for quite a long time, the West. Um, so the, the mining and cow towns were very low. Uh, by low, there's not much law in it. I hope that was clear. Social factors, there's a lot of different ethnic groups. You've got black people, you've got Chinese people, you've got the white settlers, you've got the Indians, and they don't get on very well. And especially after the Civil War, there's a lot of falling out between, and there's a lot of racism from the white people and uh, between the other groups. Finally, there's the belief that you should never back away from a confrontation and you should deal with things yourself. And everyone had a gun, which led to a lot of people just taking the law into their own hands and causing a lot of violence. So we're going to look at two people today. Billy the Kid, you also hear him called William H. Bonney, but they're both not his real name. Um, and he was a famed outlaw responsible for a lot of shootings in the American West. People believe 21, so they've been proven that he did nine. Uh, but there's an interesting reason as to why he goes on this shooting spree. It's also a guy called Wyatt Earp, who's a famous law enforcer who took part in a very famous shootout at the OK Corral. If any of your family members watch Westerns, they'll probably see in a, a movie called The Shootout at the OK Corral, which makes Wyatt Earp very famous. But he's not an outlaw. He's a law enforcer. But the way he deals with outlaws is quite interesting. So what you're going to do is you're going to make notes on sort of for each individual, the overview of them. So who were they? Where were they from? What were they all about? What did they do as law as either an outlaw or a, um, you know, a law enforcer? But also how lawless did they make the West? How much did they contribute to the West being lawless during their time as 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 active sort of participants in the West? So we're going to watch a video. And what I would like you to do firstly is answer these questions. What caused Billy to form a gang called the Regulators? When did his crime start? What did they do, the Regulators, and why? And why was he so popular with people in the West? So maybe take a photo of those or write them down because I'm going to play the video. I'll, I won't pause it. You can pause it when you need to. And then we uh, answer the questions for me. Most people think of me as Billy the Kid. Ruthless outlaw and natural born killer. But the real me, Billy Bonnie, I'm just doing my part to bring justice to a lawless frontier. In February 1878, a posse of crooked lawmen murdered my boss and friend, John Tunstall. So those of us who worked for John formed a posse of our own and vowed to avenge his death. We called ourselves the Regulators. The regulators weren't long in getting some revenge. About three weeks later, they caught up with two of the actual shooters in Tunstall's death, Billy Morton and Frank Baker. Morton and Baker had been riding all day, but we were on fresh horses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where the hell are they? They were right behind us. We still are. Guns down, fellas. Billy, don't. Don't. No, Billy. 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 Billy, no. No. Billy, no. Jerry's going to convict him, not us. In Lincoln County, the law was in the pocket of the house. We all knew Tunstall's murderers would go free. I don't think they would have received true justice. There were too many uh, friends of the Dolan faction in Lincoln, and they would have gotten away. But we didn't let that happen. They allegedly attempt to escape, and of course are shot down. Each regulator put a bullet into them so that they would all be equally responsible for the murders. And they also killed one of the regulators who they didn't trust to keep the pack, so three men died there as the Lincoln County War began in earnest. They pinned it on Billy, as they did all the other murders in the Lincoln County War. They kind of like always like to pin them on Billy, but in the legend, but nobody really knows who shot them. Every cause needs a public face. I became the face of ours. 
This guy had personality coming out of his ears. People were crazy about him, especially the Hispanic population. He spoke Spanish fluently, he never condescended. Even the townspeople, when all the papers were reporting that he was bad, they actually got along with him. But the killer with the killer's smile isn't exactly the story the papers want. It's easier to label me a bloodthirsty mad dog murderer. And they can do it, because they don't know the first thing about me. Okay, so hopefully you picked up the answers to the questions from that one. Uh, so what caused Billy to form the regulators is the murder of his boss, John Tunstall, by some law enforcement officers. These crimes started in about March 1878, after John Tunstall was killed in 1879. What did they do? They hunted down the men who had killed uh, John Tunstall and executed them. He also committed a lot more crimes over the next few years. Why was he so popular? Uh, he was like, they, they tended to pin a lot of the crimes on him. He was very popular with the people. He spoke Spanish, which a lot of people in New Mexico, which is a state just on the border of Mexico, would speak. Um, he was sort of a young lad, so uh, the, the papers would pin a lot of the crimes on him, despite not knowing much about him. So he became a bit of like a famed figure uh, in the American West. So, just as a bit of background for you, I'll read this out. You need to add this, obviously. Apologies if the video keeps starting as I go backwards and forwards on, onto that slide. Um, so, you need to be putting an overview of who he was and how laws did he make it. I'll read out some information and you need to go and, and fill that table in. Um, so, he was born in 1859. He grew up in a, in a mining town, obviously, we know, full of lawlessness. It became the, the Lincoln County War between ranchers and settlers. Now, we're going to come on to that next topic, but we've discussed how ranchers and settlers didn't get on. And he became famous across America as a gunslinger who apparently killed 21 men. We don't actually know. And he was declared an outlaw, as in no longer can be protected by the law. You know, people can handle Bill the Kid as they want because after killing those police officers. And he was shot dead by a sheriff in 1881. So key events of his life, he had an early life of theft and cattle rustling, like stealing cows, but nothing too major. And he later gained the reputation as he kept escaping jail. So people knew him. He was a notorious jail escapist. And he was very good in gunfights. He became famous in newspapers. So after the 1878 uh, Lincoln County War, Billy swore to kill everyone who he blamed for John Tunstall's death. So they killed all the enemies and they killed police who came for them. Uh, and the people in New Mexico, because he could speak Spanish and was very popular, would actually help him to hide away. Despite being caught and brought to court and sentenced to death, he actually, Billy the Kid, escaped. He was finally tra tracked down by Sheriff Garrett in 1881 and killed. So why was he so important? He highlights for me the problems of law and order in the West. So a lot of the powerless people in the West are the poor, the ethnic minorities, and the small ranchers and homesteads who protected him and gave him a hideout. They liked the way he stood up to himself towards the government and the big cattle barons and the fact that you couldn't stop him. They, he was like a, almost a hero to them for the way he stood up to the cattle barons and the law. He was a hired gun, so people would pay him to fight the wars between the cattle barons and the ranchers, which we'll come on to. But he sh it showed how they didn't really trust the sheriff, so they pay this guy to protect them. And he highlighted the weakness of the justice system in the 1878 to 81 because they just couldn't deal with me. He kept getting out of prison. He, he killed nearly probably 21 people. It wasn't a very effective justice system at the time. So that's why he's really important. Okay. Next up is the gunfight at the OK Corral, uh, which well, I'm going to show you a scene from the movie. You won't really understand what's going on, but fellas start shooting each other, basically. Um, so, so let's watch this. That's Wyatt Earp and his men. These are the outlaws they've come to catch. by standing by the horses now. Come on, get home. Goddamn kid. get ourselves into this. You don't have to worry about a thing. I just went over there in this arm. You did? Come on, go ahead. Gentlemen, I'm not going to allow any trouble. Fine. 
among you, throw up your hands. Oh, not what I want. And it goes on. But basically, there's a shootout between Wyatt Earp and his gang of law enforcers and some outlaws. And um, in that, obviously, several people die. And this is in this movie, and it's become a very, very famous uh, movie as a consequence. So um, you may want to make some notes, but um, I'm just going to give you the, the overview of it. So as we know, the mining towns, there wasn't a lot of law and order there. And the mining town of Tombstone in Arizona, which is right in the south of America, boomed in the 1800s. And with that law, because there wasn't much law enforcement. So within the town, there was a rivalry between the rich miners who controlled the town and the cowboys and ranchers. And the cowboys and ranchers, the Clantons and the McClowries, the names we're going to learn of again. So in 1880, the rich businessmen uh, who were control the town were a bit sick of the laws. So they hired Wyatt Earp as a deputy sheriff to bring order to the town. Now, we had a mixed history of fighting uh, and had run, run a brothel, but he had served as a deputy marshal in Wichita, Kansas, so he was very, um, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. So there were clashes between the Earps, so there's Wyatt and his two brothers, and then the Clantons and the McClowries, who the Earps had been brought in to sort out, because the lawmen were trying to get stolen horses back from them, that sort of stuff, and it led to the gunfight uh, at the... Um, at the, which we just saw in at the OK Corral on the 26th of October, 1881. So this is like at the end of Billy the Kid's time as well, uh, where and the, the, the OK Corral is like a saloon. And it's where the Earps killed two McClowries and a Clanton. The Cowboys then revenge kill Morgan Earp, which is Wyatt's brother. Uh, so Wyatt then revenge kills two men he thinks are responsible. Um, so basically they were forced to flee tombstone as they saw them just as murderers because there's like oh they killed the clanters and the mcclarys the clanton and mcclarys killed morgan Earp, so then white went and killed another two men it became a little bit messy so they were forced to leave tombstone in 1882 eventually after law and order came to tombstone this is an example of a law and enforcement officer actually contributing to less law and order he was trying to bring people to justice but by the same time he was also killing and causing a lot of killing which is not what people want in their town so as we have discussed, you need to go back and um, make your notes on who Wyatt Earp was and how law was that he and his gang or his brothers made the West. So on the board now is, although we've got those two examples, there's actually, it's interesting to analyze how much law this actually occurs in the West. So there's a lot of statements on how lawlessness changed as we get into the back end of the 1870s and the 1880s, which is when Billy the Kid and Wyatt Earp were active. And if you just studied those two individuals, you, you might think that it was still a very, very lawless place. But let's read those. And then I want you to decide if it was more or less lawless. So lawlessness did decrease in most settlements as they began to develop. People needed their businesses and their families needed to be secure. Residents voted in town government elections who passed laws to ban guns within the town limits. As a result, most towns in the West were peaceful. Even in Tombstone and Dodge City, people stayed safe as long as they stayed out of the saloons and the gambling halls. Once Lawless Frontier Towns, the frontier is the separation between 
white land and Indian land, were now connected to bigger towns and cities by rail and telegraph. People, uh, that we've already said that one, law officers and judges could keep in close contact with their superiors in the state governments. Uh, the federal governments are the one which runs the country, had close links with their marshals. And the violence of Billy the Kid and Earp was sort of the exception and not the rules. It wasn't actually common. That's why we studied them. They're like isolated examples. So look, it wasn't perfect with law. Um, full of law and order because we've got Billy the Kid and Wyatt Earp. But it actually was a lot better but as they became developed. Families started to move in and the communications and transport improved. So in general, laws decreased as settlements developed as people needed their business and their families to be secure and they took matters into their own hands. So they placed laws to ban guns. We've, we've discussed this, but I'm just summarising it. Towns are now connected to bigger towns and cities by rail and electricity tra uh, electric telegraph which meant law officers and judges could keep in close contact with the government and the marshals. Overall, this increased law and order in the later part of the American West. So can you just summarize the two or three reasons why law and order improves? I think you've got that people started to demand more because they had businesses and families. They passed laws to ban guns from the towns and they were connected to bigger towns and cities by transport and telegraph. So the government could keep in contact with uh, the, the, the judges and law officers. Once you've done that, we are finished for today. Please upload a picture of your work onto the Firefly task. Do email me with any issues you may have. And apart from that, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.